Hi, today I'm going to look at the interactions between a PC and a file server and tracing those interactions with Procmon and uh, by way of comparison I'm also going to run a network trace at the same time. Uh, now here's the setup, I have a PC, I have a network, actually it's all local area network and then I have a remote file server and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, my PC, open Windows Explorer, navigate to a particular share and then double click on a file to op open it in Acrobat Reader. So let's get on and do that. Here's the machine, here's the file in the uh, share that I mentioned. Uh, before we click on that we'll start a network trace and we'll also start a process monitor trace. Now we double click on the file and it opens as you'd expect. So let's stop this trace and we'll stop the network trace as well and uh, let's go ahead and take a look at those. A quick reminder this is the setup we have with the uh, PC talking across the network to the file server. So let's take a look at the network trace first. So I've got that all loaded up here. Um, the machine I did the recording on I accessed using RDP so you can see a lot of RDP traffic here. So what we're going to do is uh, just specify um, 445 which is the SMB port and also I just want to see packets with data in them at the moment. Okay so that gives us that. I'm going to uh, give us some some space here so we can see some some of the values over here on the right hand side. Um, let's do a find for the actual PDF file which was test PDF. Whoops. We do that looking for that as a string in the packet list. Um, here it's looking for it in the directory structure. I, I want to actually find the point where it it uh, where um, Adobe Acrobat on my PC opened the file on the file server. So let's uh, look for the next entry. Okay, so here's one open request. Now Windows tends to open and close things just to check heading information and, and other types of things. So let's see if there's another one. Uh, there's another find there. There's another find there. What I'm looking for is uh, an open where it's followed by lots of reader requests. Um, let's have a look after this point. Uh, probably the best thing to do. Here's the reads. So if I do a find but look upwards. Uh, of course I'm finding all the Wireshark being clever, it uh, actually shows you the uh, the file information. But here's the here's the uh, open for the file, um, and it's happening at fourteen twenty eight sixteen point four two three. So let's now look at the Procmon trace, and uh, I'm interested in entries for the. Acrobat Reader process, which is called AcroRD32.exe. So let's apply that as a filter. Um, I'm not that interested in registry entries, so let's switch that off. Um, and now I'm mainly interested in uh, my test file, which was called test.pdf. Oops. I'll do a find for that. And here you can see it's actually opening it. Um, again, uh, Windows tends to fiddle around and open and close uh, files over and over again as it reads information. Um, the area I'm really interested in is where Acrobat Reader starts reading the actual um, file. So I'm just going to try to uh, spot this in the trace entries. One way I could do it is just by specifying the read operation. In fact, let's do that. Let's say that we want all operations 
called read file. Okay, so it reads other files as you can see. But obviously there's going to be a point where it has to read the uh, the actual file. And there it is. So at this point here you can see that it's reading uh, the file bit by bit. Now if it's doing that we must have matching entries in the network trace or you would think we would. So let's go and have a look in the network trace at 142817.235. These were both traced on the same machine so we don't have to worry about synchronization issues. Um, and around that time we certainly do have uh, read requests and read responses. Uh, we have some earlier actually, so there's probably one earlier than that. Um, 17.235 There will be a slight difference, I think we covered this in a previous video, there will be a difference between the uh, timestamps. Um, it can be around 50 milliseconds, something like that. Anyway, we've got read requests in the network trace and we've got read requests in, in here. Now what we should be seeing in here, of course, is we should see network entries for uh, these reads. And we have in fact got network show network activity, but you can see we don't actually have any network trace entries in here. So let me explain why. If we come back to these slides. What actually happens is the application does the file read, uh, in this case it's Acrobat Reader, does the file read um, into the operating system. I've simplified this diagram some, somewhat. If you want to see a more detailed diagram, uh, there's a very good one in the uh, Windows Internals book from Microsoft. But anyway, we have a, a redirector that intercepts our file operations. And if it's a local file, we'll get obviously do a local file read. If it's a file that's on a file server, then the request gets redirected across to the file server. But we also have a caching mechanism that can intercept these file reads. And the upshot of all of this, all of this complexity, is that actually the network activity is run under the process of the system kernel, ENTOS kernel. So that means that by default, here we have filtered out all of the system entries. And in fact, it's a default exclusion. Uh, we'll see it here. You can see it says process is system exclude. Now, if I just switch that off, that won't help me because I'm specifying that I just want the Acrobat reader. But what I can do, I can force an OR condition and so I simply say process is type in system and apply that and now you start to see uh, system read events um, because this is where it's um, preloading the cache and doing all sorts of other things and we should start to see TCP entries although I have a feeling that uh, Oh, I've got the operations thing set, so let's switch that off. And my trace file is, my trace entries have jumped forward somewhat, but here you can see the interactions between the PC and the file server on port 445. So you can see it's sending requests and getting responses. So that's how it works. You need to make sure if you want to look at the network activity associated with SMB traffic, you must remember to enable the system process so that you can see that information. I hope that helps and I'll see you soon.